Hello and welcome to Sunday. In today's lesson, which is lesson number 12, we'll be talking about pleasing God. I'm sure you all want to please God. I want to please God. So what does it mean to please God and what do we need to do in order to please God? Let us pray. King of glory, we thank you. We give you praise and an adoration. Thank you for the privilege of once again coming to learn by the power of the Holy Spirit. Lord, please teach us how to please you all the days of our lives. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Pleasing God. As usual, we'll start with our Bible passage, which is taken from Romans chapter 8, verses 5 to 8. Romans 8, 5 to 8. And it says, For those who live according to the flesh set their minds on the things of the flesh. For those who live according to the Spirit, the things of the Spirit. For to be carnally minded is death, but to be spiritually minded is life and peace. Because the carnal mind is enmity against God, for it is not subject to the law of God, nor indeed can be. So then, those who are in the flesh cannot please God. So in that passage, we are seeing that if we live according to the flesh, if we let the flesh to dictate what we do, what is right, what is wrong, then we cannot live by the Spirit. Okay? Because those who live by the flesh set their minds on things of the world. Last lesson, we talked about uh, worldliness, this, the things of the world. So those who live according to the flesh, who allow the flesh to rule them, are doing worldly things. But however, those who live by the Spirit will do spiritual things. If you are spiritually minded, it's going to lead to life, it's going to lead to peace. Lead to peace. But those who are carnally minded, those who allow the flesh to drive them and to push them, those ones are not going to please the Lord. The carnal mind is not in agreement with God. It is actually an enemy of God. The mind that is based on earthly things is an enemy of God. But the mind that is based on spiritual things is a friend of God. So it's only those who are in the spirit that can please God. Those who are in the flesh cannot please God. That's basically what that passage is saying. Our memory verse is taken from 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, verse 1. 1 Thessalonians 4, verse 1. In the King James Version, it says, Furthermore, then, we beseech you, brethren, and exhort you by the Lord Jesus, that as ye have received of us, how ye ought to walk and to please God, so ye would abound more and more. The New Living Translation is probably a little easier to understand. Uh, it says, Finally, dear brothers and sisters, we urge you in the name of the Lord Jesus to live in a way that pleases God, as we have taught you. You live this way already, and we encourage you to do so even more. So Paul is saying, I want you to live the way I have taught you, and I have taught you how to live in a way that pleases God. And if you're already living in a way that pleases God, keep doing it. That's essentially what that memory verse is saying, Paul's message to the church in Thessalonica. So introduction, pleasing God is or should be the goal of all believers. That is all those who have trusted their lives to Jesus, who have trusted Jesus Christ for their salvation. We should That should be our goal as believers, as Christians. Those who want to please God need to meet certain requirements. First, they must seek God by faith. We've talked about this before. You cannot qualify, you cannot earn the grace of God. You seek God by faith, by putting your faith in Jesus Christ. You walk in the spirit and not in the flesh. We already explained that from our Bible text. And also, you work worthy of your calling in obedience and submission to the will of God. You know what God has called you to. So you walk in, walk in a way that makes you worthy to be in that calling. God has called us out of the darkness of this world into his light. So we walk as children of light. We obey God and we submit to his will. God created us for his pleasure. So we should always seek to please him. Revelations 4 verse 11. Revelations 4 verse 11 in the King James Version says, Thou art worthy, O Lord, to receive glory and honor and power. For thou hast created all things, and for thy pleasure they are and were created. I'm sure you recognize the, the song. There's a song that says, Thou art worthy, O Lord, to receive all glory and power. For thou hast created all things, and for thy pleasure they are and were created. So we were created to please God. And we should be Please, we should be willing, we should be delighted at all times to please him, because that's what he created us for. 
Today we have two lesson outlines. The first one talks about walking in the spirit and the second one talks about living by faith and obedience. Walking in the spirit and then living by faith and obedience. So let's talk about the first outline, walking in the spirit. What does it mean to walk in the spirit? We said those who walk in the spirit are those who can please God and those who walk in the flesh cannot please God. So what does it mean to walk in the spirit? Paul reminds the believers in Rome that those who are in the flesh cannot please God. We read that in our text, Romans 8 verse 8 says, so then those who are in the flesh cannot please God. That is a fact. If we allow the flesh to lead us, we cannot be pleasing to God because the spirit of God is a spirit of holiness, spirit of obedience. So the first step in pleasing God is to accept the sacrifice for sin that he provided in the death of Jesus Christ on the cross. In other words, the first step to pleasing God is by accepting the plan of salvation, accepting Jesus Christ as our Lord and Savior. That is the first step. Because if we don't know him, the Spirit of God cannot dwell in us. And if the Spirit of God is not dwelling in us, the Spirit of God cannot lead us. So the first step is to accept that God has already made provision for our sins. We accept that and we accept to be his children, to obey him and to live in accordance with the dictates of the Spirit. Number two, it's only when we have accepted Jesus Christ as our Lord and Savior, then that's when we are in the Spirit, because that's when the Spirit dwells in us and not in the flesh. So it's a necessary step to accept Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior, to accept the sacrifice that God made by giving his one and only Son for us so that we can accept him and live with him and be in unity with the Father. We accept Jesus Christ by faith and we walk in the spirit by faith because without faith, we can't please God. That's what Hebrews 11 verse 6 says. It says, but without faith, it is impossible to please him. For he who comes to God must believe that he is and that he is a rewarder of those who diligently seek him. So those in the spirit are the only ones who can please God. For us to get into the spirit, we need to accept the Son of God as our Lord and Savior. And then we do that by faith. But that is only, it's when we walk in the, when we accept by faith that we please God. And he rewards us for walking diligently before him. B, walking in the spirit. In the same Romans chapter 8, Paul explains the difference between the sinful nature and the nature of those regenerated by the spirit. In other words, he explains the difference between those who walk in the flesh who still wallow in their sins, and those who walk in the spirits, who have been regenerated, who have been made new. Number one, those who are still in their sins have their mindset on sinful desires, whereas those, the ones regenerated by Christ have a completely new mind, and that is that mind is controlled by the spirit and the desire to live by following the spirit. So there's a very you know, two different parallel mindsets. One that lives by the, spirit, by the flesh, wherever the flesh leads, you satisfy the desires of the flesh and you live for yourself and you fall for yourself alone. But those who walk by the spirits, who live by the spirit, their minds have been renewed and their only desire is to please God. They want to live in accordance, in accordance with the dictates of the spirit of God. We read from our passage, Romans 8, 6 to 8. I'm sure you recognize these verses, Romans 8, 6 to 8. For to be carnally minded is death, or to be spiritually minded is life and peace. Because the carnal mind is enmity against God, for it is not subject to the law of God, nor indeed can be. So then those who are in the flesh cannot please God. So we cannot be in the flesh and still want to walk by the Spirit. Number two, the next step for believers in pleasing God is to be sure we are walking in the Spirit and not in the flesh. Galatians 5, 16 says, I say then, walk in the Spirit, so you shall not fulfill the loss of the flesh. We are saying the same thing. Walk in the Spirit. Allow the Spirit of God to lead you. And the Spirit of God can only lead those who have accepted Jesus Christ into their lives. Okay, As many as received him, as many as believed him to them, he has given the power to become the children of God. And these children of God are led by the Spirit. So that is the first outline, walking in the Spirit. We'll now go to the second outline, which talks about living by faith and obedience. Now we have accepted Jesus Christ into our lives. The Spirit of God is leading us. We're no longer yielding to the dictates of the flesh. How do we now continue to live by faith and obedience? Number one, we must live by faith. There's no argument about that. We must live by faith. Hebrews 10, 38 says, Now the just shall live by faith. But if anyone draws back, my soul has no pleasure in him. The just, the righteous believers must live by faith. 
not by works, not by your qualification, not by your experience. You live and walk by faith. Hebrews 11, 6, we already tell it, it says, but without faith, it is impossible to please him. For he who comes to God must believe that he is and that he is a reward of those who diligently seek him. So without faith, we can't please God. Remember, we're talking about pleasing God. So we walk by faith and we need that faith in order to please God. God cannot be pleased by those who do the following. God cannot be pleased by those who do the following. One, those who draw back from him because they have no confidence in him. You don't trust him. So you say, well, I'm tired of following this God because I can't see anything. Hebrews 10, 39 makes it clear. It says, but we are not of those who draw back to perdition, but of those who believe to the saving of the soul. If we draw back, if we stop following just because we don't see immediate evidence, then we are probably going to draw back to perdition. We don't want to be lost. I pray none of us will draw back to perdition. None of us will be lost in the mighty name of Jesus. God is not pleased with those who draw back, who go back and because they, they no longer have any confidence in him. They cannot see, uh, they think things are not moving fast enough or the way they want. No, you've got to stick with him, live by faith, not by sight, live by faith and walk by faith. God cannot also not be pleased by those who doubt the truth of his declarations and prophecies. His words are yea and amen. The word of God is true. In fact, he is the way, he is the truth. And his word is the truth. Second Corinthians 1 verse 20 says, For all the promises of God in him are yes, and in him amen to the glory of God through us. If God has said it, then he will do it. That is just the fact. There's also a popular song by Nathaniel Bassi that says that if he has done it, then he will do it. He has that history. He has that reputation of keeping his word. So, don't doubt the word. Don't doubt the truth of the word of God. Number three, God cannot be pleased with those who do not believe that his way is the right way that is holy and perfect. If you think that his way is probably one of many ways, no, you're not likely going to make it. He's not likely going to be pleased with you. He wants those who will be dedicated, who will diligently walk with him, who will diligently focus on him, who will say like Job, even though he slays me, I will trust him. So God cannot be pleased with those who don't believe that they're on the right track, that they are following the way, the truth, and the life. Psalm 18 verse 30, Psalm 18 verse 30 says, As for God, his way is perfect. The word of the Lord is proven. He is a shield to all who trust in him. So we know that we must live by faith and that certain things will not, uh, will, God cannot be pleased if we have certain characteristics, should draw back from him, if we doubt the truth of his word, or if we don't believe that his way is the right and perfect way. What else? The requirements of faith and confidence in God is not unreasonable. After all, we have the same requirements of our children, of our spouses, of our family members. We want them to believe in us. We want them to you know, have confidence in us. So also we should have confidence in God. It's an indispensable condition for pleasing God. So therefore, pleasing God is a matter of living according to his precepts, his words, his commandments, and doing so in love. Not doing so grudgingly, but doing so in love. John 14 verse 15 says, if you love me, keep my commandments. In other words, it takes love to walk by faith. It takes love to obey God. It says, if you love me, keep my commandments. The epistles that we read are God's plans for believers, and they are filled with exhortations of encouragement to display throughout our lives the behaviors that are pleasing to God. Read through the epistles, read through the New Testament. You will see how a child of God ought to believe we are behaving, how, how a child of God by their behavior will please God. First Thessalonians 4, 1, which is also our memory verse that we read earlier, said, finally, brethren, we urge and exhort in the Lord Jesus that you should abound more and more, just as you receive from us how you ought to walk and how you ought to please God. Fruit of the Spirit, gifts of the Spirit. There are so many things. Read the letters of Paul. You will see those behaviors that are pleasing to God and those behaviors that are not. So take time from now on to study what it is that God expects of us and how to adhere to those in faith and in obedience so that our lives will always please him.
Okay, so in summary, what have we talked about today? The topic again is pleasing God. We were created to give God pleasure. He created us for that purpose. So let us fulfill that purpose. We read that in Revelation 4 verse 11. God wants us to please him. And he makes it possible for us to please him. He has given us the where with all the tools with which to please him. We do these things by the power of his spirit who lives in our heart. So one step in pleasing God is accepting Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior, having the Holy Spirit come into you. And when the Holy Spirit is in you, you walk by the Spirit. And if you walk by the Spirit, you obey God, you, you, you have faith in him and do only those things that please him. So I want us all to make up our minds today to start giving God pleasure in everything that we do. Will you join me as we make that declaration, as we make that promise, that determination to say from now on, I'm going to please you everywhere I can. Let us pray. Father Lord, we thank you for showing us what it means to please you. Lord, we desire to please you from now on. Please help us, oh Lord, to walk in, in, in the spirit and to obey you in all that we do in the mighty name of Jesus. All the days of our lives, Lord, we want to please you. We want to give you pleasure. In Jesus' mighty name we have prayed. Amen. Thank you for listening. Thank you for watching. Shalom. God bless you.